Hello everyone, my name is Chris and in this video we're talking about atomic transfers. Now, I've mentioned atomic transfers in previous videos but I haven't really talked about their usage and how you can handle atomic transfer groups with PyTeal. Atomic transfer is an algorithm feature that groups transactions and then submit them all at one time. This means if one of the transactions fail, all of the other transactions in the group fail as well. Atomic transfer can be used for cases like trade between two parties, payments to multiple recipients, token swaps and decentralized exchanges, and more. Atomic transfers are great because there is no need to set up complex logic like hash time lock contracts to do simultaneous transactions. PyTeal provides the GTXN object for you to index the transactions in an atomic group. For example, if there are four transactions in an atomic group, you index the first transaction by doing GTXN0 as GTXN is zero indexed, the second transaction with GTXN1, and so on. Now, if you don't know for sure how many transactions there will be in an atomic group, you can use the global.groupSize method to get the total size of the current atomic group. Now with ABI support, there's a new way to access transactions in an atomic group with transaction types. Let's dive right into the code and see how to work with atomic transfers with transaction types. All right, so here we have a simple atomic transfers example smart contract. Inside of the router, we're only defining what happens during creation. And if you come down here and look at the ABI multiple pay method, it takes in two arguments. Argument A, that is the payment transaction type, and argument B, which is also a payment transaction type. Now this ABI multiple pay is returning a sequence where the first assert is asserting that the receiver of the payment A is the same as the current application address. Same for payment B, we are asserting that the receiver of payment B is also the current application address. And then down here, we're asserting that the amount of payment A is 100,000 microalgos, which is 0.1 algo. And here we're asserting that the amount of payment B is 0.2 algo. Now, if you look at the order of the arguments, because payment A comes before payment B, this payment A is the first transaction in the atomic group. And then the next transaction is payment B. And the third transaction is the application call to the ABI multiple pay method. Now down here, we have another method called multiple pay, and it's doing the exact same thing. Payment A and payment B is still in the same atomic group, and we're asserting the same things down here. But the only difference here, we're not accessing the transaction types, but we're using the GTXN object to index into the transactions in the atomic group. Now if you look at the first assert, we're saying GTXN0.receiver is the same as the current application address. Here, when we say GTXN0, we're indexing into the first transaction in the atomic group, which will be payment A. And when we say GTXN1, that's the second transaction in the atomic group, and that will be payment B. So these are two different ways of accessing the transactions in the atomic group. Now down here, I have the same code that is going to compile the smart contract and write out the artifacts into the file system and I'll use those files to deploy to that flow and interact with our smart contract. All right, open up your terminal and run this file. And then if you go to the atomic transfers folder, the artifacts folder is created and inside the folder, we get the three artifacts. All right, now head over to that flow and uh, configure to sandbox by clicking over here, sandbox, save, connect your dev wallet. If you haven't made your dev wallet, you can create one from this tab right here and then go to ABI Studio and import in your ABI. Go to File, Upload File, find the folder with your code, go into Artifacts, and then import in the contract.json file. Now let's create the app by clicking Create App, click Bear, and because this smart contract doesn't hold any states, I'm going to set all these to zero. Upload your approval program, your clear program, and then create it. Now, if you expand this page, you can see the details of this method. You can see the method signature, and here you can see how many transactions are included in the atomic group when you execute this method. So you can see that the transaction count is three. So there'll be three transactions in the atomic group. This method takes in two arguments, A and B, and they're both payment transaction types. All right, now let's execute this method. 
Now we want to send two payment transactions to this smart contract. So before we execute this, let's head over to the application overview page by clicking this app ID right here and copy the application account right here. Now go back to ABI Studio, click execute, and then paste in the smart contract address here. Now, if we quickly go back to our code, here you can see that we are asserting payment A's amount has to be 0.1 algo. So this payment A should be 0.1. Payment B also sends a payment transaction to the smart contract. And if you go back to the code, you can see that the amount of payment B is 0.2. So here I'm going to type 0.2. And if I execute this, you can see that the method executed successfully. And this means all of the four asserts that we had in our smart contract return true. Now let's see if the multiple pay method that uses the GTXN object works as well. Here I'm going to paste in the smart contract address again. And because it does the same thing as ABI multiple pay method, I'm going to send 0.1. And for payment B, I'm going to send 0.2. And when I execute this, you can see that the method executes successfully as well. Now, if I change the amount of payment B to 0.3 and execute it, it will fail because it will fail the assert saying that payment B's amount should be 0.2 algo. And there you go. You just saw an example of a smart contract that uses GTXN object and transaction types to access transactions in an atomic group. Today, we took a deep dive into atomic transfers and discussed two ways to index transactions in an atomic group. You can use the GTXN object to index transactions, or you can simply use the transaction types and have the order of the arguments be the same as the order of the transactions in an atomic group. That's it for today. Let's move on to the next video.